Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ash. I'm the founder of Active Solutions AI, where we make enterprise solutions attainable for small businesses. In this video, I'm going to be going over the best automation that Go High Level has to offer. That's a bold statement. If you want to fight me on it, we can do an old fashioned duel. Um, but I'm actually going to break it down step by step on how you can set this up for yourself because it's been very useful to our team and it saves so much time. I might actually go into at, at the end of the video, I actually might go into detail on the extension of this on how we automate our entire onboarding process. But I'll figure that out once we get to that point. So first thing uh, we are going to do just to give you a breakdown of what's going to happen. Um, we whenever we close a deal, we log the person's information based on you know, the deal that we close them on whatever it might be. And then uh, we're able to basically automate all of their specific information onto an agreement that gets sent to them. And then further, we actually, um, the, an automation or a form gets sent to them. They fill out the form and then everything from that form populates into our project management tool. So it's actually a really cool process and it's something that's been extremely helpful. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First thing you need to do is hopefully you have some sort of agreement that you share with, that you sign up. If not, I would advise doing so. You're gonna come into templates and we're gonna have you build a template. Just to give you an example of what ours looks like. So we have a full layout of the deliverables of exactly what they're gonna get. We have custom fields, right, for what the their deposit and their monthly and then obviously we let them know uh what the cost per text message is going to be then the everything else is just other normal agreement stuff that you want to have you could probably have chat gpt write you up a pretty good one it comes to custom fields custom fields are like I'll give you a breakdown they are like little pieces of code that house variable information and when i think about how i just said that it sounds kind of confusing but just to give you a breakdown all right, so if you go into settings, you can come to custom fields. And in these custom fields, there are specific contacts. So let's say I have a contact na named Bob, right? So Bob has any has a bunch of custom fields under his contact name. If I fill in, let's say, status of this custom field right here, there's a custom field called status, and I put, you know, closed or whatever it might be that custom field would be populated for that contact specifically so these are custom fields that you can add you can easily add them here you can make them monetary drop downs whatever it might be custom fields are also what you use for form questions answers etc now I'll give you another example i'm going to pause this all right so to give you another example here is our test contact if I scroll down, you'll see all of these custom fields. So accounting, current challenge, are you currently generating leads, which is a drop down. So all of these custom fields are associated to this contact specifically. So if this contact filled out a form, it's going to fill in their custom fields and it's gonna be specific to the contact, which CRM do you use, go high level, et cetera, all this stuff, okay? Checkbox if they selected that. Now what we're gonna do is we create something that are basically custom fields, but they're called opportunity fields. So they're associated with the, the actual opportunity of the contact, okay? It's basically the same thing as custom fields. The only difference is, is a viewable under the opportunity. So if I come into, one more time, custom fields, and I go to add field, and let's say single line, next, I, can make the object an opportunity instead of a contact, right? So now, so now if I come under this contact again, and I go to opportunities, so it's already an opportunity, right? Opportunity gets updated when they come into the system. You've set this up correctly. It's on when one opportunity moves from one stage to the next. So for example, when we have a lead that's generated, it goes into the new leads pipeline. Opportunity is updated as a new lead in the all leads pipeline. Right, so it's in the new leads pipeline stage. This is a pipeline, and these are all the stages within that pipeline. So if a lead is generated, it automatically populates here, and the opportunity is in the all leads pipeline in a new lead pipeline stage. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Maybe I can just find my test contact in here, and we can save ourselves some time. And it doesn't look like, oh, yes it does. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna go under this contact now. And if I scroll down, let's just say de this deal was closed. I just had a call with him, right? Let's just pretend. And this deal was closed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here. 
and I'm going to update their opportunity fields that we've created for them. So what I'm going to do is change their status to one. And let's say their opportunity value was $3,000 and the owner is assigned to, let's just say myself. And let's say they are internal, which means we are making their go high level account. And these are just phrases that we use specifically for our business. Um, let's say their deposit was 3000 and then their monthly is 1000 just to make it easy. All right. So I would update this opportunity, right? I, I can go ahead and do it. Um, actually, it's going to fire an automation and my team's going to think that we closed a deal named test. So I'm not going to do this, but if I update this here, what's going to happen is we have an automation that's automatically going to send them a text message and I'll go to this actually. Okay. So opportunity is updated, right? And that's basically what these triggers are. So if, the opportunity is updated that they are AI assistant plus or whatever it might be. It's going to hit this condition and they were AI assistant plus internal, right? So that was the trigger that the opportunity was updated. Whenever we updated, we actually closed the deal. We went in there, we updated and we saved the information. Well, we didn't save it because we didn't want it to send, but theoretically we would have saved it if that was the case. And then it's going to come in here. We're going to add a tag to that individual. It's going to send a webhook. This webhook gets sent to here actually, because it's going to collect the information, uh, so all of their values so that we can send it into our project management tool. And then it's going to send a text message saying, Hey, welcome to the team. We love you. As you always should, you want to have a really streamlined onboarding process. It's going to wait one minute and then we send them an email with our AI system plus template. So it's going to select this template. And the coolest thing about this is that when it sends this template that I showed you in the beginning now, because we've updated the contact fields and we've actually formatted this entire agreement with custom fields, if you look in here, so contact company name, et cetera. So it's going to automatically populate their company name and it is going to automatically populate what their deposit was on the contract. It's gonna automatically populate what their monthly retainer is. And then I believe that is, those are the only custom fields that we need, but it's going to send them an email basically saying, Hey, what's going on? Um, and this is just the template that we created. So it's going to send them an email with all of their next onboarding steps and forms that they need to submit, et cetera. Uh, and it's going to have all of their pricing information and everything populated. And this is 100% automated. All you have to do is fill in their fields and update their opportunity. All right, so I actually wanted to give you a full overview of what it looks like once we've actually closed someone. So I pulled up another test contact and we've actually ran this through before. And if you, so this is the email that we sent out. So this is the template that we created, right? So we attached the contract template that we created and we attached it to an email template so that we could actually send that entire thing all at once. So now the automated is the text message that goes out, says, hey, welcome to the team. And then it's gonna send them this email and they're going to be able to click this button right here that's going to open up their agreement that is specific to them and all of the information that we typed in. So it's going to populate their price, monthly retainer price, all of the services, their name or their business name, if we have that filled in, et cetera. And they can go ahead and find all of that information. It's also going to give them next steps. Usually, I guess this is an older contract, but usually we say, hey, Click on this. Let me see if I can find another contact really quick. Okay, here we go. So this would be the email template that actually goes out to the individual. And it, we ask them to join our school community, which I also advise everybody watching this video to do so. Then it will give you um, the ability to sign your contract, which is this big button at the bottom. And I would, I would create something like this for your business, regardless of what type of business you have. If you have an agency, a brick and mortar, whatever it might be, you need to have, you need to streamline your onboarding as much as possible to provide a really, really good user friendly experience so that literally anybody could follow the process and, and 
get it done as quick as possible. You want everybody's onboarding to look exactly the same or as close to it because this creates a lot of consistency in your business and it makes it easier on your team uh, and it makes it significantly more scalable. Even though it sounds like something very minuscule, once as you begin to scale and you're signing up multiple clients, like let's say you're signing up 20 clients a week, if you can get even close to all 20 of those clients having the exact same onboarding process that takes the exact same amount of time, you're going to be able to have your employees manage a much larger group, probably two, three X. Um, and you can do this and streamline it with SOPs and automations like this, but probably two, three X the amount of clients they would have if you didn't have these systems in place, which means less payroll for you and significantly larger margins. So although this seems like something very, very small, it is uh, in the grand scheme of things. It's it's actually extremely important to have these things in place. One of our other very important things is we create an onboarding form that we have everybody fill out. So let's see here if I can find this form. All right, perfect. So there's a button that says, make sure you schedule your onboarding call here. So they would come here. They would have all the availability, take uh, onboardings through a certain period of the day. And we have different people who take our onboardings, different account managers who lead them. So click on this and we embed a form to the calendar so that they can't submit their appointment without giving us this information. So for us specifically, we need to collect you know, legal business information so that we can register their, their A2P, get them an active phone number on the account, uh, the name of their customizing their AI assistant. So any information that you think is relevant for you guys to receive, make sure you have something like this, because in order for them to take the next step into your onboarding process, they have to schedule that onboarding call. And if you embed the form, to the onboard because if you just send this form out separately and you tell people to schedule a call we used to do this people will schedule the call they're they will ignore the form because they don't want to do work but now scheduling the call is is mandatory in their minds they have to do this in order to meet with your team right um, and i'm sure in your business you have some type of onboarding process that they have to go to in order to make it to that next step and if you attach the form to something that is 100 mandatory in order for them to move forward then they have they're going to complete it whether they like it or not and you need this information our team has an entire account set up for everybody on the or for everybody that we sign up before they even get to the onboarding call so they show up to the onboarding call and we're like hey we got the account created your bots created this is you know everything that we have set up and we're just waiting on approval for a to b verification whatever we work very very quickly because we're able to get all of this information so if you don't know how to bet a form to a calendar what you're going to do is go to the calendar, ours would be onboarding. And you're gonna go to edit. You'll see forms and payment. You'll create a form in the form section. You're gonna embed it here. And I would include this in your onboarding cross process and make as much of it automated as you possibly can. Now to give you some extra sauce, all right, so to bring you back to here, one of the things that happens after trigger is fired and it recognizes the condition, which is the, you know, which contact was updated specifically. So the condition here is actually the trigger. So if you look at the condition, it'll say, okay, which trigger was it that fired? And we just select that one. You can literally update depending on, you know, what your conditions are. Or maybe you just have one offer. If you have multiple different offers, then you can do it like this. If you just have one offer, you'll just have one trigger. So one of the things, the steps that we have in the trigger is a webhook and this webhook fires. And what happens is the webhook gets caught. And then we recognize which type of client it is. Again, if you only have a package, this makes it significantly easier. And what we do is we set up a zap to map all of the custom fields that we collected. One second. All of the custom fields that we collected in Go High Level. Also, if you're not familiar with Pierre, and I'm I'm seeing this actually more and more that people either don't use it or don't know what it is, which is crazy to me. If you don't know how to use Zapier, you need to change that ASAP. Drop everything else, forget about go high level and learn how to use Zapier. So, so useful for everything that we do. We catch the webhook from the workflow. The workflow fires whenever we update the, the contact and then it will split into pads. This is very specific for us. And if you have you know your own way of doing things, that is fine. We just have multiple different offers. So we'll recognize this according to tags. Remember we add a tag in our other workflow over here. So you guys don't get completely lost. So we add a tag here and it's recognizing the tag that is being added and then once it finds which tag was added, it hits the webhook and then it moves to 
creating a, a task in Asana. So we'll select the Asana workspace. We create a new project and then we add tasks and we assign them to individuals in Asana. Now we have one more automation, which is equally as cool, where once the person, great, it exited me out of everything. Okay, now, so once the person completes the form that we send over to them via email, we have another webhook set up. So the person completes the form, fills out all of the information, and then we send an automatic invitation to school so that they can join our group. And then, this is the, the cooler part, what we do is we find the task that was created in the last zap, right? So we find that person via their name, and then we find an exact match, and we update the task with all of their answers on that form. Now, our team or our onboarding specialists are able to go into Asana once the person completes the form, and we can use all of this information to um, start creating their account and doing whatever it is that we need to do to make sure that they have a smooth onboarding process. So all of this is 100% automated. We don't have to do any of it manually, which is absolutely amazing. I hope you guys got some value from this. I know I kind of sped through the in there. This is just an add-on for people who probably have some experience with Zapier. It probably made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, you can drop a comment. You, We do a lot of setups like this for our own clients. That's one of the things we specialize in is not, we're known for conversational AI, but we do full management and a high level account specialization. So if you have any questions or want to know what it's like to work with Active Solutions, you can click the link below, book an appointment, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.